one very interesting thing in the AI slash robotic space in the last couple of weeks, and that is somebody built a literal cyborg, half robot, half living organism. Cool, right? Well, what they used for the living organism part, well, that gives me pause. They're using robotic parts, a mushroom brain, and also developing a fungal self-healing skin. They also designed it to look like a spider, which is not good. I haven't used the term unholy abomination uh, a lot in my life, but I'm gonna start now. As one of the researchers put it, if this continues to develop, I think it's quite crucial to consider what happens when we release this out in the open. And he said, when we will release it? When, not if? If we release it, why would we release it? I would have preferred, he said, let's think really hard if we should release fungal robotic spiders in large numbers into the world. But that's just me. All right, I'm sure you've seen Terminator 1 and 2, or at least 2. That was probably the bigger one, right? So you know Arnold, that famous line, he goes, I'm a cybernetic organism, living tissue over a metal endoskeleton, right? Did I nail that accent? I'm a cybernetic organism, living tissue over a metal endoskeleton. It's classic. Right, so is that kind of like what you think when you hear the term cyborg? Well, whatever the case is, the researchers at Cornell University decided to create their very own version of cyborgs. Now, the sort of the robots themselves are not too noteworthy. You've seen things that are similar before. Some are shaped like starfish. They have five legs. They can move around. Some are on wheels. They look like little remote controlled cars. You've seen little robots like that before. What's different about these is that they're controlled by a living entity, a king oyster mushroom. So mushrooms have these things that kind of resemble roots. They have a root system. These can stretch for vast distances underground and work kind of like a information highway. They can pass information across very large distances, right? So similar how you have underneath a city, you might have the fiber optic cables that transfer information back and forth. Similar to that, mushrooms have a underground network of something called mycelium. And some research into these mycelium networks suggests that these uh, fungi, I swear I'm not going to make a fungi joke. They're really, really, I'll try not to. But these fungi, this, these my mycelium networks, can send electrical signals to effectively communicate with each other. In fact, scientists were able to categorize some of these signals, aka words, and found that mushrooms have a vocabulary of around 50 words that they use to communicate. So we're assumed they're communicating about sources of food or perhaps injuries to the network, to that root system. But we don't really know yet. And just so you're clear, there are some scientists that are saying that we don't have enough sort of proof that this is a language quite yet. They're not willing to accept this as a form of language. But these signals, they're not random. There is some sort of a pattern to it. There's some sort of a thing that's happening here. It's not just random noise. So going back to the researchers building these mushroom cyborgs. So the team began by growing the king oyster mushroom in a lab from just a very basic kit that you can order online. So yes, yeah, so you too can uh, create this thing, this unholy abomination horror in the comfort of your home. Now that I think about it, this would be like the weirdest pet imaginable, wouldn't it? Imagine this thing following you around the house like a puppy. Actually, on second thought, don't. So the point is the scientists grew this mycelium biomass of the mushroom. And again, keep, keep in mind that this is how it senses its environment. This is how it communicates, how it transports nutrients. By the way, before people start correcting me in the comments and go, um, actually, so the, the mushroom is the fruit of the fungi. It's the thing above ground that we typically think of as a mushroom. The mycelium is that underground network that you typically don't see, sort of the root system. So we're, when we're talking about mushrooms controlling this thing, technically that's not quite the case. We're talking about the mycelium, the roots. And so they take that mycelium and they connect it to electrodes that are able to pick up those communications, those signals, right? The electrical signals that the mycelium uses to communicate across vast distances. We just connect it to wires, electrodes that are able to pick them up. Right? So we're taking those sort of bio signals, right? they're made by life, they're electrical, and we're converting it to digital, to digital information that we can use to you know, control computers. And that is used to control the robots. So the robots are able to walk around and do roles as a response to 
the electrical spikes generated by the mycelia. And so, for example, when the researchers stimulate it with ultraviolet light, this mushroom cyborg is able to change the gait and trajectory, which is showing that they're able to respond to the environment, right? So they, they, they sense something and they're able to move as a response to what they're sensing. As one of the researchers put it, mushrooms don't really like light. Based on the difference in the intensities of the light, you can get different functions of the robot. It will move faster or move away from the light. So if you're following along at home, in summary, we took this organism that's uh, very different from us. It has no concept of human ideas like empathy, love, or mercy. Then we gave it a robot body. And now we're annoying it with light to see what it does. Terrific, right? What can possibly go wrong here? By the way, I know some of you sometimes kind of miss my dry sense of humor, so just so there's no miscommunication, I'm genuinely pretty excited about this. I think it's a cool project. It's very interesting. I'm glad that they're doing this sort of research. Certainly, I think we can be excited about this and maybe also a little bit concerned, or at least a little bit like in awe of what we're doing. I mean, we're taking a living entity, one that's very different from us, and uh, outfitting it with a robot body. I mean, I'm very excited. Don't get me wrong. But there's one part of me that goes, this seems weird. Now, what's also interesting is they have another similar project. I think it's the same team of researchers where they're growing a self-healing skin for robots, a skin that can react to light and touch. From the research paper behind this project, they're saying this paper explores an experimental endeavor that successfully incorporates living, self-regenerating, and reactive Ganoderma sessile mycelium into a model cyborg figure, creating a bio-cybernetic entity. While some of this stuff might sound like a horror movie in all seriousness, this could have some really beneficial applications. For example, in agriculture, these little mushroom robots could sense the soil chemistry, know when to add fertilizer and so on. This could unlock a whole new avenue of fungal computing, which has a huge potential. We can't get into that today, but it's a whole sort of potential branch that could be opened up for different ways of doing computing. But of course, as some scientists point out, Releasing these biohybrid robots and various ecosystems could disturb the environment in ways we can't predict. Rafael Mestre, who works on the social, ethical, and policy implications of emergent technologies, said the following, quote, You are putting these things into the trophic chain of an ecosystem, in a place where it shouldn't be. If you release in big numbers, it could be disruptive. I don't see at this moment this particular research has strong ethical concerns, but if it continues to develop... I think it's quite crucial to consider what happens when we release this in the open. So let me know what you think. Is this exciting, scary, horrifying? Would you be freaked out if robots in your home were powered by, had the brains of, uh, you know, mushrooms of mycelia? Fungus for brains, if you will. Does that strike you as odd, alien? I once had some leftovers in the back of my fridge that grew a whole bunch of fungus. I gotta say, if that thing could walk its way out to the trash bin, that would be kind of nice. I would not mind that at all. With that said, my name is Wes Rob, and thank you for watching.